Arthur Charles Clarke was born on the 16th of December 1917. As a boy he lived on a farm where he enjoyed stargazing and fossil collecting. Before long he became addicted to science fiction after buying his first copies of pulp magazine Amazing Stories at Woolworths, pursuing his interests through the works of authors H.G. Wells, David Lasser and Olaf Stapleton. Clarke began writing for his school magazine in his teens. He moved to London in 1936 and joined the Board of Education as a pensions auditor. He and some fellow science fiction writers shared a flat in Grays Inn Road, where he got the nickname Ego because of his absorption in subjects that interested him. However, times were troubled, and the young Arthur Clarke, like so many other men, was forced to leave his peacetime work to serve in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. During his time there, he was put in charge of a new radar blind landing system, and it was an RAF memo he wrote in 1945 about the future of communications, where he suggested the use of satellites 17 years before Telstar was launched, that started him on the path to fame. After the war, he attained a first-class degree in mathematics and physics from King's College London and began the search for work. In 1949, he joined the Institution of Electrical Engineers, now the Institution of Engineering and Technology, as assistant editor of the journal Physics Abstracts. By the end of World War II, an enormous backlog of abstracting work had to be tackled, and Clark was part of the team responsible for classifying and indexing everything published in the physical sciences. As Clark said later, I probably had a bird's eye view of research in physics, unmatched by anyone else on Earth during this period since every important journal, in every language, passed across my desk. In his spare time, Clark started writing a non-fiction work on space travel published in 1950. The book was well received and is credited as being the first written in English to set out the basic technical theory of spaceflight. The success of interplanetary flight led Clark to embark on a full-time writing career. Over the course of this career, Clark was the author of more than 100 books, including Childhood's End, The Nine Billion Names of God, and The Songs of Distant Earth. Perhaps most famously, he co-authored with Stanley Kubrick the novel and screenplay for 2001, A Space Odyssey. But he was regarded as far more than a science fiction writer. He was credited with the concept of communication satellites geosynchronous orbits which keep satellites in a fixed position relative to the ground are called Clark orbits in honour of his work. Clark won the Nebula Award of the Science Fiction Writers of America in 1972, 1974 and 1979, the Hugo Award of the World Science Fiction Convention in 1974 and 80, and in 1986 he became the Grand Master of the Science Fiction Writers of America. He was awarded the CBE in 1989 and knighted in 1998. He moved to Sri Lanka in 1956, lured by his interest in marine diving, which he said was as close as he could get to the weightless feeling of space. In the same year, Clark and his business partner Mike Wilson uncovered ruined masonry, architecture and idol images from the sunken underwater Konasaram temple, including carved columns with flower insignias while scuba diving on the seabed. Clark was diagnosed with polio in the early 1960s, cutting short his diving career and forcing him to sometimes use a wheelchair. From this point onwards, rarely leaving his Sri Lankan home, Clark was linked by his computer with friends and fans around the world, spending each morning answering emails. He continued to write during this time, and in the 1980s he became even more widely known for presenting his TV programmes, such as Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World, and mysterious universe. Clark died in March 2008 after suffering from respiratory complications and heart failure stemming from his post-polio syndrome. His Sri Lankan adoptive family were among the thousands in attendance at his funeral. British astronomer Sir Patrick Moore paid tribute to his friend, saying he was a great visionary, a brilliant science fiction writer and a great forecaster. Clark's fame was due in part to his engaging personality and his ability to articulate a holistic overview of where science was leading mankind. 
his reputation as a prophet of the space age rests on more than a few accurate predictions. His visions helped bring about the future he longed to see. Charles Collais, who planned NASA's Cassini mission to Saturn, lauded Clark's contributions to the space program, saying, when you dream what is possible and add a knowledge of physics, you can make it happen. <laughs>